Hello there and welcome back to my channel and today I have a treat for you. Today we're going to be taking a look at a Godzilla movie I have quite literally not seen since 1997. Now you're probably wondering, how have you not seen this movie since 97? It's easily available, just go ahead and stream it. Well, I have a little rule of thumb when it comes to Godzilla movies and I do not watch them unless I have a physical copy. This movie evaded me for years. Now to be clear, online is probably about like 30 plus dollars, which isn't like terrible. You know, there's worse prices for movies you could pay for. But obviously there's a little bit more than I want to pay for a physical, just regular DVD copy that's not even a Blu-ray copy. So I kind of pushed it off. About a decade ago, I had a chance to purchase it and it was literally just right in front of me. But I put it back on the shelf because there was a Gwar CD that I had to purchase. And I don't regret buying that CD by any means. But because of that, this movie had to sit in the back burner for 10 more years. And here I am reviewing it and I had to make sure that I do not break my rule of thumb. In this movie, I gotta say, there's a lot that I forgot about it, and there's some of it that I even remembered that just came back, like old memories that were somehow just tucked away. I do know my older brother did love this movie for one particular scene that he kept on replaying, just for laughs, shits, and giggles. I think you know what scene that's gonna be. We'll talk about that more in depth later. So, with all that said, let's go ahead and dive into this movie and talk about Godzilla vs. Megalon and how is it a movie for me and how do I view it. For any of the younger fans that have not seen Godzilla vs. Megalon, I want to go ahead and say this. This movie is most known for its cheese, its campiness, and how off the wall it is. It was also one of the movies that was featured on Mystery Science Theater 3000. If you have not seen this series, go check it out. It's a staple of my childhood as well. I totally forgot about it until I was going to do this review. I had watched it with my dad in the late 90s by the time it was a rerun. I believe it aired back in the 80s. It's something that I feel like is a gem to any sci-fi junkie will remember from back in the day and sci-fi junkie is definitely something that pretty well describes me. This is also the infamous Godzilla movie with the epic tail sliding kick. Yes, the legendary meme that we all know and love. So epic to the point to where they had to give us an instant replay. Over on my Instagram page, I went ahead and ran a little poll because I wanted to know which Godzilla scene between the two flying Godzilla or sliding tail Godzilla was the more popular and guess which one won popular vote? It was Flying Godzilla won it all. When you haven't seen a movie in about 20 plus years, there's a lot you're going to forget about. For example, in this movie, I totally forgot about the blood. I totally forgot about the fact that we literally see a kid getting kneed in the face. But in the same sentence, I do want to go ahead and say that I never quite forgot about these posters. Damn, Toho, I thought these movies were for kids. At this point, it was pretty well solidified that Godzilla was a superhero for kids and he was here to stay as a hero. And this movie kind of has some of the soundtrack that pretty well gives Godzilla that little heroic vibe. It kind of reuses certain bits from Godzilla vs. Smog Monster. Even certain bits of the soundtrack even sound like Godzilla vs. the Sea Monster. I wouldn't be surprised if they went ahead and just reused some of those soundtracks from those movies. With that said though, they did not use classic soundtracks like the Godzilla March or other pieces that were memorable from the early, early movies of the Showa era. It's not a dark Godzilla movie by any means, but it does borrow some really odd and just wild elements. For example, we have Emperor Antonio and his underground civilization that is kind of a lost civilization that is supposed to be the bad guys, I guess, but I kind of understand where they're coming from. I mean, let's be real and talk about why they're pissed off and why they're sending a monster that is being sicked on us. Let's put it this way. This is an underground civilization that is pissed because we keep doing nuclear tests. Again, and again, and again, we just don't stop. Now look, let's go ahead and identify with this on the adult level, shall we? Imagine if you got neighbors that are just being really obnoxious and loud around the clock, or you have people that are living below you that are just loud at 3 a.m. playing music and just being obnoxious, you know, and disrespectful. I can understand where this comes from. Now, unfortunately, none of us have a monster. I mean, obviously, maybe one of us could sick a dog after them, but yeah, you'd be looking at further problems. So, I can understand where the Cetopians are even coming from when it comes to the constant nuclear test that we are always doing, and of course, they feel like they gotta do something. But, the difference between them and any common person is they're not willing to talk. They're just like, hey, f it. we're just sending a monster out. So, with this no negotiations mindset that they have, not only are they sending their giant beetle god up to the surface to destroy and wreck us, but they're also making a call to the Nebulon so they can borrow Gigan because why? Now if all four of you want to mix it up, I'm going to make this a tag team match. I don't know about you guys, but I think Godzilla vs. Gigan and Godzilla vs. Megalon were probably Teddy Long's favorite movies growing up. 
But hey, don't we love a good fashion tag team match? And this movie has probably the dopest tag team match of all time in the Showa era. One thing about this movie is it takes a while for Godzilla to show up. But the thing is, it doesn't feel like a drag in this movie. That's the good thing about it that I really love about it. Because whether it's just the overall campiness, the humans fighting, the car chasing, or just Jet Jaguar in general, I feel like I'm a bit more drawn in and the something about this movie is just severely amusing on a large scale, which makes it a lot better than Godzilla vs. Gigan, which didn't have a lot of substance in comparison to this movie. This movie, I do want to go ahead and say, is not exempt from stock footage. There's one scene that really gets me where I'll notice that I feel like I saw Gigan before Gigan even makes an appearance to the battlefield, uh, just due to the fact that the editing was so sloppy in this movie. And there's certain scenes that it's just so obvious you can tell that they are literally just replaying the scene. They're not reshooting, they're replaying. The budget's movie was pretty low for this movie, and you can tell they were just making do with whatever. But somehow they came through and they built a masterpiece of a movie that is so memorable for what it's worth. Maybe it's just so bad and campy that that's why we love it. Maybe that's the best way to put it. I don't know about you. I'm enjoying this movie though. Look at this final battle scene, where our heroes are surrounded by flames, it's all looking bleak, but then Jet Jaguar comes through in the clutch for the save, and then after that they send Gigan off, who's off to tell the tale about how he got clapped again for a second time by Godzilla and his new best bro. Hey, you know what? For once it's not King Ghidorah taking the fall for the aliens, it's always King Ghidorah being used by the aliens, but no, today he's taking the day off and he absolutely rightfully deserves it because he will get his break until 1991 when he returns for vengeance and blood. Granted, he will be being used by somebody else. Moral of the story is though, King Ghidorah took the day off. This one ain't his problem the least bit. I haven't even talked about Jet Jaguar, and that's something I gotta go ahead and touch on. So Jet Jaguar was quite literally designed by an elementary school kid back in the day. Yes, an elementary school kid in a contest. But the thing is about Jet Jaguar at the time though, his design was pretty different than what we saw in the movie. In fact, he was half bird, half robot. Changing the design actually upset the kid that had designed him, which I kind of understand and I can kind of level with him on that due to the fact that imagine designing this kaiju, just putting all the effort, hoping that you see it brought to life in a movie. You know, you, that'd be big for you as a kid. Even as an adult, that'd be big for you. But to see something else, do you feel pushed to the side? Yeah, I kind of understand where this kid is coming from. With all that said, I gotta go ahead and bring up a few bullet points. Now, it's crazy to think about that Jet Jaguar, this is his one lone appearance in a Godzilla live action movie. Yes, he did appear in Godzilla Singular Point, which I have not watched to this day yet. And I'm gonna have to go ahead and buckle and actually watch that eventually and give you guys my thoughts on that. But this is the one lone movie and it's still wild to think about a robot that is so popular from the Godzilla series. This is it, this is it. Now, I do wanna see Jet Jaguar return someday. Now I've talked to a few Godzilla fans about this and there's something we gotta talk about that's kind of the elephant in the room, uh, quite literally. I've been asked, hey, would you like to see Pacific Rim merged with the Godzilla MonsterVerse? I would not want to see that. Personally, I think the idea is terrible. But if it does happen, just introduce Jet Jaguar as a Jaeger. It just, I feel like it's the only plausible, reasonable direction that they can go with. But overall though, I prefer that the Pacific Rim series and its universe stays away from the Godzilla universe in the first place. It's also worth mentioning that we got a brand new fresh Godzilla suit. A little slimmer, they just keep on getting slimmer, the Godzilla suits. And this suit was also created within one week's top. That's all it took to make this Godzilla suit. Now, once Godzilla shows up, I'm absolutely loving it how he's just swinging at everybody. He doesn't give a damn. He's swinging at Megalon. He's swinging at Gigan. He is just here to back up Jet Jaguar because that's all he cares about. They just met today, but guess what? They are on good terms and even shake hands at the end. That is a bro friendship to the finest right there. Look at that. They are homies for life. Look, I'm telling you, do not sleep on this Godzilla movie. Go ahead and watch it. It's got the ultimate cheese, and it's a movie that checks out, and it is definitely an A-Wister Godzilla movie. This one joins the club, absolutely. Up next, we have part one of the Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla story arc. You know it, you'll love it. I'm absolutely ecstatic to bring you the next review of the next movie because I feel like it is one of the finest Godzilla movies. So, get ready. Goodbye, everybody. Bye-bye! Shalom!